Peter Obi's campaign council plans replacement as Donyo Kupe resigns. And Dumebi Kachiku jubilates as court sacks Ngosu led ADC Exco. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. The chief spokesperson of the Obi Dati Campaign Council, Yunus Atanko, has said in a meeting uh, that a meeting will soon hold to decide who will replace Donyo Kupe as the council's director general. This was after Kupe announced on Tuesday that he was stepping down from the role of um, his role as DG following a judgment of a federal high court sitting in Abuja that convicted him of violating the Money Laundry Act. In a letter addressed to the Labour Party presidential candidate, Peter Obi, the ex-aide of the former president, Goodluck Jonathan, said he was stepping down because he didn't want his travails to be a source of distraction to the campaign. Meanwhile, the National Deputy Campaign Manager Obi Dati Presidential Campaign Headquarters, David Balami, on Tuesday described as untrue his alleged replacement of Okube as the Director General. He described the publication with the caption, Labour Party may announce uh, his Isaac Balami as uh, Okupe's replacement as fallacious, baseless and false. Now joining us to discuss this is Adeni Ikunu. He's a political analyst and a researcher. And Tunji Abdulhamid, who's a member of the People's Democratic Party and also a legal practitioner. It's so good to have you join us, gentlemen. Uh, thank, thank you very much, much for having us. It's a pleasure to join your program today. Thank great. you. Great, great, great. Uh, I'm going to start with you, um, Adeni. Uh, let's, let's, I mean, the whole country has watched all of this play out in, a, in the space of a week um, as Donio Kube has gone from a spokesman of the party to um, someone who's been convicted for money laundering. But uh, many people are wondering how well the, the, the Labour Party handled this situation. So I'll ask you as an outsider looking in um, for a party that would be termed as um, a movement or the new um, tsunami that seems to be sweeping across the country. Um, did they handle this situation with Donyo Kupe very well? Well, I don't know how else you handle a public matter, especially something that um, everybody has seen to be uh, what one should not have or to associate with a campaign DG of a political party. I've said it many times before, uh, myself being a part of Nigeria's political process, that is a difficult terrain when you find yourself. Uh, before I was ever announced, the spokesperson to the presidential candidate of the ADC, they did background checks and found out that uh, we are not the type who perhaps are doing double dealings here and there. Uh, before they eventually announced to the world that I'll be speaking on behalf of uh, His Excellency Dumebi Kachuku. Uh, and when I hear that Doyo Kupe, who is the DG of his campaign, uh, collected about 240 million in cash, uh, which on the six charges preferred against him, I told myself that for a Peter Obi who had added the state, and for any appointment he had made in the past, he ensured due diligence before those persons became part of his government. He must have and should have done due diligence uh, before eventually accepting uh, to appoint um, Edonio Kukwe to be his campaign DG. Many persons uh, are not comfortable with my position on the matter, but for a Peter Obi that has actually headed government, and uh, who definitely has ensured a proper scrutiny of his appointees as a two-term governor of Anambra State would have done the same, bearing in mind that this is a higher office that he intends to occupy. So on the part of Donyo Okupe, uh, many people want us to look at the fact that he resigned because of this particular issue. But I, I wasn't even expecting less of him because when anything of this nature rubs off on you as somebody who is helping a presidential candidate the best thing to do is to resign. So one not, wanting us to paint it in gold and platinum that he did what is honorable is because we live in a country where when people do normal things, they are looked at as superstars. In the land where people have eyesight problems, a man who perhaps doesn't see clearly is their king. 
And I need to say here that perhaps because we don't see such act referred to as honorable, it is a proper thing to do. So let us look at let us not look at Doyo Kukwe's move as honorable. It is a proper thing to do when you have such indictment against you. Don't forget that uh, he actually had to sleep somewhere uh, near the prisons until he was able to pay 13 million. I bear in mind that each of the choices counts had an attraction of about 500,000 naira for him to pay. So uh, having said that, I think that um, we can move forward and he a self relief. But there's another thing that surprises me is the uh, particular refutation of the fact that Doyo Kukwe has designed, resigned as his campaign DG. I saw the letter I wrote. And the letter I wrote happened, came on the letterhead of the Labour Party. So I, it makes me wonder again if at all um, this is uh, just politicking. A man was charged. The world saw he was charged. He paid 13 million not to remain in jail. He afterwards wrote the letter. So do we say that the picture will be that has come across in recent time as somebody who wants to set Nigeria on the path of justice, equity, fairness, and proper democratic um, activities? Uh, will now go back to a man that has been indicted. So it's a very interesting development for me. And I must say that um, uh, greater days of interest are ahead, and we can only go further uh, to have those things done. So that's how I want to open up the program this evening. Interesting. Let me come to you, Tunji, picking up from where, um, Adeni, you dropped off. Um, I, I ask again, how well do you think that the Labour Party dealt with this issue and handled it? I will, I'll tell you where I'm coming from. Um, the Labour Party had put out a statement before he even went on to step down as DG. Um, and, and it was titled, What Happened to Okukwe Was a Political Ambush. This was by the Labour Party. And I'm wondering, many have queried it, many have said, many have fallen behind this particular um, you know, publication saying, well, yes, uh, it seems more like a political witch hunt um, on the Labour Party. Uh, and, and he's just a small fish in the big fry. So I'm asking again here, did the Labour Party do the right thing and how well did they handle it, especially with this publication? Uh, I would not say they've done the right thing or they've not done the, the right thing. Well, because using the adjective, the right thing, is not appropriate in this, uh, with due respect, in this uh, circumstance. Because uh, as it is, the Chief Dori Okupe and the Labour Party particularly has no choice. They have no choice than to that for Chief Dori Kukwe to, 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 to leave the party, uh, to leave the position as DG. Even the uh, party that calls himself, uh, uh, and, uh, what's it called, Mr. Uh, the Clean Party, the party that doesn't that don't pay Sisi. You see, the, the point is that people are missing, people are praising uh, 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 Chief Okupe or Labour Party or justifying the fact that uh, uh, he need, he's, he's, uh, Dori Chief Okupe is now a, 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 an hero because he resigned his appointment. The, probably are missing uh, issue up. There's a difference between somebody who's facing trial, who's being alleged of an offense, that the trial is, con is ongoing, and is holding a position and refuse to resign, pending when the matter will be, will be, will be over. Uh, that with, with a person who has already been convicted, mm. he's a convict, he has been convicted as a, 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 of offenses. And people are trying to also justify by trying to draw a decision to say, look, he was not convicted of corruption. Mm. I, I don't understand what it means by confusion, I'm not confusion of, uh, of, of corruption. So, so, was so, so I'm, was, I'm wondering, yeah. Tunji, because uh, when you say, when you're trying, I mean, I know you're a lawyer, so you're trying to, you know, explain to us the difference between a convicted felon and, of course, um, someone who's being alleged to commit a crime. Now, in this case, would you have rather had a Peter B and his campaign team, um, you know, jump in front of this and distance themselves from this particular situation, as opposed to putting out that statement? Um, or could they have just immediately throw the man, thrown their man under the bus because you know they are the, like in your words, the clean party? What would you have rather they did? You see, the, the point is that what I'm trying to say is that, look, they have no, they, they have no other option than for, me, for Chief of Gupe to leave the party and to leave the position and, uh, the, the, as, as DJ of the, of the party. Because if they're not leaving the party, has nothing to do with Nigeria. It has a lot to do with the party losing its value and its, and, and, and its, and its reputation. So the, even if the chief of Kube did not resign, I bet you by now will have been will have been asked to step aside because a party who prime itself as a, a a clean party will not be seen to 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 be to be to be in that circumstance. I, I don't want to agree 
that they are they are, they are actually a team party in that circumstance because just like uh, uh, I didn't even say with what, what this question arise was there no due diligence because this case is not today these are over seven years ago so people are even saying it uh, uh, against the Labour Party or it's a witch hunt or whatever, I don't want to agree with them because it's, it's, it didn't start yesterday. It didn't start uh, two years ago. Seven years ago, and at the time he was appointed and it's been, it's been, it's, uh, it became a member of a Labour Party, the case is only in court. So I don't know how that relates to it's because of Labour Party. That, that's why he was convicted. I, I was given a, 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 that. I don't want to agree with that. You see, in Nigeria, the problem we have is that I don't tell ourselves the truth. And, uh, and 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 move forward. We try to justify every issue, particularly when when that doesn't support our intent. You, you, you see, the the point is this: whether or not it it has to do with corruption, because uh, because people are trying to use technicality to say what the court said was that he, he collected a, a raw cash, two hundred million plus. The question is, what was money? What was that money meant for? Where is where is the money today? What did he do with the money? Has he been able to account as to where he took the money to? Has he been able to tell us where he, who he gave the money to? And what was money meant for? But, I, I, but I, is that, I, but I, is I, that I, also not the reason why many people have queried why now? Why not before he became DG? Okupe has been walking free this whole time. For the past seven yes, years, like you have said, why did it take this long? Well, you might say it's the cut processes, but why now? But because a lot of people are querying the timing. The why now? I, I, I might want to toss this over to Adeni, uh, because there, a lot of people are picking but, but, holes in this. As much as we know this is a, a judicial process, many would not in any way want to take it without a pinch of salt. Adeni. Well, let, let's make this clear that when we talk about the uh, moments that justice is dispensed in any case, I think we need to direct our questions to courts. Generally, the position of law courts in the country and the time that justice is dispensed is usually a problematics regarding the discussions we have in different circles. Whenever people actually go to court, we, it is not only in this case. We've had instances where people had to go to court and they wait many years, even not on dispensation of criminal justice, on some other issues. So it is a judiciary and process issue. So anybody who feels that this is coming up so that they can witch on doing your cook, but let's also not forget that this is a country where you have an election issue and it goes on. And that is why we have even been talking about creating special courts to deal with election matters. And Bastard Tuji Abilamid would agree with me that that is a conversation within the nation's judicial system, that we need to dispense justice as quickly as possible so that people don't die waiting. So people that are talking about the issue of delay, why is it now? I think they should direct their conversations to the court because there are other non-criminal justice issues that have been in court for many years. And oftentimes, it is about how well you are able to prove or not against the person. Perhaps it is a coincidence. And that is why the dispensation of justice against Don Yokubo is coming at a time where the court has been able to have on their table proof of such monies dispensed. According to Doyo Kube, he said that money was used to pay those that were staffers of the former president of the country in his capacity as a senior special assistant on media and publicity. And also, the money was used as well for the image laundering of the president. And the question was asked, why did you receive 240 million naira in cash? If we look at all of what preceded it, that is way too much. And that's why 26 count charge actually got preferred against him. So, in summary, let people stop arguing or making a hero of Don Yokupe. Don Yokupe is a man that has been especially active in Nigeria's Fourth Republic and as a medical doctor who spent a minimum of seven plus strike nine years in the country's university or so or wherever he studied to obtain his MBBS, should understand better that you don't even handle such money. And if at all the person giving you the money doesn't understand, you stand a good position for somebody who works closely with the president and who is working closely with a president to be, if he's voted to office, should have understood better. So let's wake up and stop calling a spade by another name, please. I'll press you a bit more on this particular situation. Um, because many would also say if the tables were turned, um, 
would you still be waxing this lyrical uh, as because this is not one of yours? But if it were one of yours, no, 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 Again, I take, with, I take you back to the statement be, that was released by the question, Labour Party please. saying that this was a witch hunt, it was a distraction, um, and they called it all kinds of names. If the tables were turned for the ADC, would this also not have been the same position? I mean, the ADC in its, on its own has its problems. Uh, okay, okay, okay let, let, let's paint this picture. The position I hold is somewhat similar to the position that Do Yoko were held for the former president of the country. And I know better that if at all any money to the tune of even 100 million must be disbursed for the running of the office that I happen to superintend over, it has to go through the banks and it will be impossible for me to even hold such cash. And for a man like Dumebe Kachuku, who the presidential candidate of the ADC, understands that he cannot even give me such an amount of money in cash because we have to account for it properly. So if the tables cannot turn and the tables cannot put me in that position, please, you can, hide, you can write it down. I'm not saying this because I am Jesus Christ or I'm, I'm a saint, but there are certain things that we must understand and try as much as possible to avoid. Don Yokube has worked with the number one person in the country. He has worked closely with those that hold first positions in the country. He's closer to information closer to policies, closer to strategies, closer to certain things he should not do. So he should not have collected it. Even if the money were meant to, for maybe as gift, the money should go through certain channels. And he knows better how to get that money to himself. So I need to also say here that, uh, apart from all of this, we're talking about Nigeria as a country and building institutions that we can leave for others that are profitable, that will enhance robust democratic processes that we hope to let Nigeria sustain or live by. So the tables won't turn, and with every sense of humility, I won't be found collecting 240 million naira. Please let that be getting very clearly now. Thank you. Great. Back to you, um, <laughs> Abdul Um This is not in any way trying to um, say that what happened or what Doyen Kupe did was good or um, you know, trying to make it look like he's a saint. But then the question, the same question can be asked of the PDP. Now, I do know, as uh, somebody who works closely with civil society, that the likes of the PDP, the APC, and I mean, keep naming them, most of Nigeria's political parties, especially the bigwigs, have not necessarily um, adhered to the Electoral Act um, uh, or the, even the recently amendment, amended one in terms of party financing and monies generally. Most of these political parties, right from 2016 till now, are yet to publish their party finances or make it even open, even with the aid of the FOI. So I bring it back again. Uh, the PDP and the APC did have a lot to say about Okupe's case, but like I asked Adini, if the tables were turned, the same sort of sentiment we would see, because this is Nigeria, there's never a smoke, like we say, without fire. You know what I mean. Um, so really, should the APC, the PDP, or even the ADC, who has also had money scandals in the recent past, even in the midst of their um, you know, primaries, should these political parties be throwing the stone uh, or throwing stones at a glass house in this case? Uh, you, you see, you are right in a way, because uh, this is Nigeria, and most times we are not sincere with, our, with ourselves. When the issue is against you, you say the right thing. When it's, when it's in your favor, you say the other side. And that's what people have been doing, and that's what has been happening. So I won't, I won't say you are wrong in your uh, assumption that if you, are, if you have been other, other candidate or other party, say the people will, have, will be saying the same thing. But for me, as a person, I will not say the same thing. I will say it the way it is. Let's, let's call a spade a spade, and let's tell them, I'll say the truth. You see, the, 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 the Labour Party found themselves in this circumstance because probably they didn't do their diligence, due diligence very well. Because uh, you, don't, you don't give a room for people to, 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 to make allegations against you or, uh, or to even convict you. Just like, uh, let me borrow the words of uh, like, uh, the governor of uh, Cardinal State. He said, uh, you say we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are criticizing you or this and that. Don't give, all the, don't, don't give us a room to criticize you. If the Labour Party, who, is the, who claim to be a clean party, had done their due diligence, they will have been aware that Chief Okupe is facing a, a, a allocation of a
uh, 200 million or other other corrupt uh, cases in court at that time when he was when he was made a member and when he was uh, appointed. So it shows that look, the Labour Party itself is not diligent enough. I will not may not even do a thorough job in terms of fighting corruption when it comes to power because that means you are not you know you just appoint people without even finding out about the background. If the that bag has been found, they have not, it will have been clear that Chief Okupe is like is facing a trial which may come one way or the other. It may be in, in favor in, 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 against him. So coming as as as, as it is now. Because of the process of the court to say it is wing chunks or it's an attempt to distract a Labour Party, I will not agree with that. If it happens to a PDP, I won't say I won't say I won't say it's a wing chunks because I I, will, I know as a lawyer that the process of court is not something you will start one day and you finish one day. This started uh, seven years ago, and today we are getting the result and we are getting. So it may be a coincidence. So I don't want to see it as distraction on the of to, to uh, as an attempt to distract a uh, Labour Party, and I will not say that if it happened to PDP. Or any other party that I like, or that I'm supporting. Okay, um, let's talk about the the level of damage that's been done, if there be any. Um, Adeni, uh, do you think yeah. that this will in any way affect the Labour Party? And even though the Labour Party candidate has said, he, you know, he's resolved to make sure that he will continue um, in his quest, but um, just as you all have been speaking tonight, it seems more like you're saying, well. Um, the party that seemed a bit more exalted than us um, seems to be now on the same level with us. But do you think so, that um, there's well, been when, any damage done? Well, when the, when the Bible got written, they did not remove the name of Judas Iscariot as a disciple of Jesus and the fact that it was the chief accountant and treasurer of Jesus and it was a disciple of Jesus, regardless of the fact that he betrayed Jesus Christ. Um, when we write the history books of Labour Party, uh, especially under the candidacy of Peter Obi, will always describe Don Yokupe as his spokesman and his former spokesman, whatever it is that happens. And that is why people like us are looking at things from a very critical point of view, because we believe that you cannot preach sainthood, yet you are not in a monastery, yet you are not actually uh, in a temple. It is key for us to not move away our eyes or shift our focus from the reality of the fact that it is always difficult to dissociate a recalcitrant child from the parents. Even if the parents are saintly, they will always say there must be somebody whose blood the child carries or the fact that certain due diligence have not been done during the growing up years of those children. For the Labour Party, it is a conversation that is ongoing as we speak, and it is also a subtraction from the position of somebody who perhaps believes he is the messiah for the country. I think it is key for us to understand that these have not subtracted from the fact that Peter Obi is still, according to a recent poll, leading four major presidential candidates. Uh, Peter Obi, then you have a Bola Tinobu. After that, you have an Atiku Abubakar. Then you have, of course, a Rabi Musa Kokonso. That is how the polls show their positions at the moment. But we must say that um, the more you have things like this happen, the more people begin to make a decision. Do not forget also that there is a conversation within the media space regarding how Peter will be actually shot people who ask him a question and he transferred the question the way Bola Tinubu transferred the question to those that answered questions for him at the Chatham House. You see, this is a reflection of the fact that no presidential candidate has the capacity to do everything perfectly by himself, and in this case, himself alone. So for the Labour Party group, I think it has removed the supposed immaculateness that they tend to project to people, and the fact that they want everybody to see them as perfect. But the reality is, no party is perfect. The APC is not perfect. The PDP is not perfect. Uh, the NNPP is not perfect. And the Labour Party, party is not perfect. Ditto every presidential candidate in these parties. But it is how you are able to sell the little and the good that is left of you. Because if we even talk about Peter Obi, for instance, I am somebody who is well-traveled within the country. And I can tell you that even the capital of Anambra joined the era of Peter Obi doesn't look anywhere like what we should actually clap for. Or Nietzsche, both of the highest number of billionaires in this country under Peter B. There was a time, even after Peter B left office, you cannot even go through on Nietzsche. You cannot go through Opoko. These are places that I have traveled in and out on the road. So that I, and even at the Anambra election, I was also there. 
So I'm trying to say that we have to try as much as possible to do the little we're able to, but will this subtract from the traction that Peter B is gaining? Well, we have to continue to look at what happens, especially because the Southeast has the least number of registered voters. I think the last time I gave us the figures, it has about maybe less than 10 million or 12 million or thereabouts. And in terms of those that also have collected the PVC, the Southeast, where Peter B comes from, has the least number. Of course, it is about 80% collection compared to the Northeast, where Atiku Abubaga comes from, where we've had over 90% collection of the PVC. And bearing in mind also that the Southwest has the second highest PVCs collected. So we must understand the dynamics of the thing that is going. So in terms of those that are going to participate in the coming elections, you also have to consider the figures that are official and the fact that the figures that have been turned out as a result of the mobile phone voting that they've done. So the days ahead are very interesting. It is for every candidate to continue to push and of course, ultimately, the electorate will decide come next year. That is February 25th of uh, 2023. Thank you, because you, you literally pivoted me to my next question. And I'm, that's my final question to you, Tunji. Um, the ANAP Foundation sponsored a, a, a poll uh, that was independently done, which is called the NOI polls. And you know what the results is. Um, Despite the travails of the Labour Party and your be led presidential campaign, um, they seem to still be in the lead. Um, and not even the PDP or the APC are, you know, uh, um, in the lead. And we also have seen where the NNPP is on that particular poll. Um, you know, a lot of responses have come. I mean, the PDP gave a very interesting response, um, you know, calling that particular poll um, names, once, once that I would not want to repeat on this show. Um, but then even the Labour Party that seemed to be on top of the polls did say something like, well, as much as we are leading in these polls, we're going to do our work and continue to see how many more people we can get. Um, but I want to ask you in closing, um, again, the question I asked to Adeni Yukunu, do you see this saga affecting the Labour Party's movement um, as we get ready for the elections uh, uh, and in closing. Um, how does this reflect on your party? You see, the, the, the point is that, let me see, this, uh, the poll is what it is. it is. It is not the reality. It is what you call it, the opinion, public opinion. So unfortunately, most of the people that, that are part of that, that poll may not even be part of the election at the, at, the, at, the long run, at the long run. As far as I'm concerned, that will not have any effect on, on my party. It doesn't have any effect at all. What the, what the, 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 the election will determine who and who will win, not that uh, opinion pool. If you look at that opinion pool, saying Obi got uh, the highest spot in the not, not central, uh, to me, it's, it's unrealistic. How, how will it be how will it be possible? I don't know how, how that will be possible. I don't I don't even know the kind of people they, they interact with. Maybe probably the elites who are also who are those who are uh, in the Labour Party. I don't know. But as far as I'm concerned, we are not, uh, the, my party is not concerned about uh, uh, that pool. We are doing our work and they, we are working hard to ensure that, look, you see, if you look at all the candidates are, are here, I'm not trying to, to campaign, it's a reality. Alaji Atiku Abaka is ahead of all of them. He's in terms of experience, in terms of everything, he's ahead of them. So there's no comparison regarding uh, whether or be is uh, leading the pool or is not leading the pool. That is not a threat to PDP as far as I'm concerned. They don't even see it. They see it as what it is. It's a pool, a public opinion. And that's what it is. So as far as I'm concerned, we PDP is not deterred about that. And we, they are, we are doing our work to ensure that we deliver. And I, I tell you, by 2023, Alaji Atiku will be declared the winner. At February 2025, he will be declared the winner of the, of the president of this country. Well, I think the Nigerians, uh, Nigerian voters will be the determinants uh, as to who emerges as the president come 2023. But I want to say thank you. Adeni Yikunu is a, a political analyst and a researcher. And of, of course, Tunji Abdulhamid is a member of the People's Democratic Party and a legal practitioner. Gentlemen, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you, you very welcome. much. Uh, it's a privilege to be on your platform. We appreciate you. Thank you. All thank right. You. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll be moving to the ADC to uh, talk about uh, what's been happening and what the court has said um, about the Mosul-led exco and how this will reflect on the party. Stay with us.